I've had this problem. Big problem. I really, really need it. A good real estate broker. And I kept searching and searching. Ugh. There are so many choices. It's really hard to find one that has all the things on my list. But I finally did it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. If you were looking for one as well, look no further. Here's a really good one. Just use mine. Use mine. I'm very satisfied. Definitely recommend. Problem gone. Thank you. Jovi Tupas, I'm a licensed real estate broker, appraiser, consultant, and accredited lecturer by the PRC. Wait lang ah. Yeah. So our lecture for uh, this morning will be on the uh, code of ethics for real estate service professionals and so our basis will be on RA 9646 and the law was approved June 29 2009 no need to memorize ito mga data na to unless you will be uh, enrolling in BSREM or the Bachelor of Science in Real Estate Management. Currently, to be able to become a licensed real estate broker, appraiser, and eventually real estate consultant, you will need to be a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Real Estate Management or BSREM. It is a four-year course. Yan. So wala na yung before na a-attend lang ng lecture and then qualified na kumuha ng uh, board exam. Right now, you need to be able to graduate sa BSREM. So for those of you who are, uh, are uh, aspiring to become real estate licensed real estate brokers or appraisers, uh, an exam is needed and a uh, diploma and proof that you are a graduate of BSREM will be needed. Later on, we will be discussing it further. So going back, RA 9646 or the Real Estate Service Act was approved on June 29, 2009 by then President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. The RA was published on July 15, 2009, and then 15 days after was made effective on July 30, 2009. So what is real estate? Real estate is the land along with any permanent improvements attached to the land, whether natural or man-made, including Water, trees, minerals, buildings, homes, fences, and bridges. Real estate is a form of real property. It differs from personal property, which are things not permanently attached to the land, such as vehicles, boats, jewelry, furniture, and farm equipment. Yeah. RA 9646 Section 2, Declaration of the Policy. The state recognizes the vital role of real estate service practitioners in the social, political, economic development and progress of the country by promoting the real estate market, stimulating economic activity, and enhancing government income from real property-based transactions. So that's why we have uh, taxes. So capital gains tax, documentary stamp tax, etc. Hence, it shall develop and nurture through proper and effective regulation and supervision a core of technically competent, responsible, and respected professional real estate service practitioners whose standards of practice and service shall be globally competitive and will promote the growth of the real estate industry. Yeah, so uh, some real estate taxes that we have currently right now is capital assets gains tax. This is the tax that has to be paid 
for the sale of a property from one person to another. Yan, capital assets gains tax. So kung magibenta, ibebenta mo yung lupa mo at saka yung uh, bahay at lupa or condominium, yan, meron capital assets gains tax. Meron din tayong tawag na ordinary asset tax. Ito yung tax na binabayaran natin or na VAT. Ito yung kapag bumili ka ng uh, property, house and lot, condominium, townhouse from a developer. Yan. Depending on how much the unit is. So kapag above 3 million, may VAT na siya. May plus 12% value added tax. So similar to sa ano, yung when you buy anything sa mga fast food, restaurant, di ba meron kang tinatawag ng VAT. Yan. So ito siya. Uh, sadly, kapag senior citizen, hindi siya exempted sa VAT for real estate. Yan. Baka mamaya may magtanong ano na, Sir, paano pag senior citizen ang bumili ng uh, condominium, sir? Uh, exempted ba yun sa VAT? Kasi nga sa senior citizen. Yan. Sadly po, hindi po. Uh, documentary stamp tax, 1.5%. Registration fee, 0.5%. Transfer fee, yan. 0.25%. Ito po yung binabayaran doon sa uh, City Treasurer's Office. Ayan. So again, uh, Code of Ethics and Responsibilities for uh, Real Estate Service Professionals 2019. So what is the definition of the Code of Ethics? Uh, before this, uh, again, for those of you who just uh, arrived and came in, um, I'm your lecturer, Jovi Tupas. And uh, if you have questions, you can uh, write it down in the chat box below. Yeah. Wait lang, ah. I'll just double check kung ito rin yung... Okay. Yeah. The reason why version 2 ito, because uh, uh, nagkaroon ng, uh, ano, ng new... Uh, circular just in 2019. So that's why I had to double check kung updated ito. Yan. Yan. So, may dumadaan na po ito. <laughs> Yan. So, san kaya yun? Yan. So, sa so participant natin. Yan. So, kindly uh, make sure na baka mamaya you accidentally uh, pressed your microphone. Baka may marinig kami na hindi dapat. <laughs> yeah. So, this is a new normal. So, yeah. So, definition of code of ethics. A code of ethics is a set of principles of conduct within an organization, institution, or profession that guides decision making and behavior. The purpose of the code is to provide members and other interested persons with guidelines for making ethical choices in the conduct of their work. Yeah, and again, reminding everyone on the microphone. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, too big, po, too big. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So in code of ethics. Uh, Hindi siya parang, ano, hindi siya parang uh, Da Vinci Code, ano? So, na may code-code pa, no? Na may, uh, ano yan, may password pa ba yung code of ethics na yan? Yan. So, professional integrity is the cornerstone of many members' credibility. Yan. So, yung tiwala sa bawat isa. Yan. Members of an organization adopt a code of ethics to share a dedication to ethical behavior and adopt the organization's principles and standards of practice. So, while we are doing... Our work as real estate service professionals, we should have a uh, code of ethics within ourselves to be able to respect ourselves, to respect our fellow practitioners, our clients, the government, and others. Yeah. So, para tayo nasa military yan. May silang code of ethics na sinusundan. So, in some, uh, uh, in some uh, military uh, uh, organizations, di ba, meron silang uh, code of ethics na never leave anyone behind. So, parang ganun, di ba? So, definition of code of conduct. A code of conduct is a set of rules outlining the responsibilities or proper practices for an individual or organization. Related, related concepts include ethical codes and 
honor codes yan, sa Wikipedia. So this is the Code of Ethics series of 2019. This is also the same file that I sent earlier in the chat box, which you can download. Again, if you're using a uh, laptop or desktop, um, most probably may kita nyo siya and you will be able to download it. Once you download it, you can open it via, if you have an Adobe or Adobe PDF reader or open PDF reader or free PDF reader, basta meron kayong uh, PDF reader, you will be able to open it. Yeah. So, kung sakali wala kayong PDF reader, you can easily download it sa, uh, sa search engine. Just look for PDF reader. Yan. Libre naman po yung PDF reader para makita ma nyo tong uh, code of ethics na to. Yan. So, the National Code of Ethics and Responsibilities for Real Estate Service Practitioners. Yan. Pursuant to Section 5F, Article 2, and Section 35, Article 4 of Republic Act Number no. 9646, otherwise known as the Real Estate Service Act of the Philippines, the Professional Regulation Commission, PRC, through the Professional Regulatory Board of Real Estate Service, PRB, RES, hereby adopts and promulgates the Code of Ethics and Responsibilities for Real Estate Service Practitioners, herein after referred to as the Code of Ethics and Responsibilities. After a series of consultation with the different national real estate associations and organizations. Yan. So, ano ba itong minimension niya na Section 5 ng RA 9646? Yan. Section 5, powers and functions of the board. The board is hereby vested. The following powers and functions of the board. Yan. Ito yung Section 5. And if you can see sa Section 5, yan, siya sabi siya eh. Section 5F, yan. So, ano ba yung Section 5F na yan ng RA 9646? Adopt a national code of ethics and responsibilities to be strictly observed by all licensed real estate service practitioners. Yan. So, yun sinasabi doon sa start ng, ng code of ethics for real estate. Yan. May sinabi rin siya about Section 35. So, ano ba itong Section 35 na to ng RA 9646? Section 35, Code of Ethics and Responsibilities for Real Estate Service Practitioners. The board shall adopt and promulgate the Code of Ethics and Responsibilities for Real Estate Service Practitioners, which shall be prescribed and issued by the accredited and integrated professional organization of real estate service practitioners. Ayan po. So, preamble. The real estate service practice, practice is an honorable profession that has a vital role in the social, political, and economic development and progress of the country. With highest regard for the mandates of the law, the board aspires to produce, develop, and nurture a core of technically competent, responsible, and respected professionals whose standards of practice shall be nationally and globally competitive. Yeah. Toward this end, the Code of Ethics and Responsibilities is hereby promulgated and adopted to govern the duties and responsibilities of the real estate service practitioners to the general public, the government, the client, the fellow practitioners, and the accredited and integrated professional organization. Yeah, and Article 1. So, um, Code of Ethics kasi is, uh, is a law or a uh, uh, circular uh, by the uh, Professional Regulatory Board of Real Estate Service after careful consultation with the different organizations. So, uh, yung mga first parts ito will be more on uh, uh, itong mga articles at saka what the law provides. Yan. So, uh, pardon lang kung medyo for some of you medyo sabi na, Sir, ano ba yun? Masyadong ano? Masyadong legal terms, masyadong maraming ano. Sir, ganyan ba talaga buong lecture? Actually, hindi naman. Ano. So, uh, we ju we're just using this as a basis. And then later on, we'll be explaining uh, each one uh, as we go through uh, as we go through them. Okay? So, kailangan natin natin basahin kasi because uh, ito yung nasusulat. Yan. So, basa tayo. 
Yeah. So as used in the code, the real estate service profession shall embrace all acts of the real estate consultants, real estate appraisers, real estate assessors, real estate brokers, and yan dito na po tayo, real estate salespersons as provided for in Section 3G, Article 1, and Section 27, Article 4 of RA 9646, as well as of juridical entities in, in the practice of real estate service in accordance with Section 32, Article 4 of RA 9646. So, meron siya mga references sa RA 9646. Itong RA 9646, we will be discussing this, I believe, uh, on Saturday. Yata. So, uh, the seminar or the lecture series is uh, arranged uh, based on the uh, availability of our uh, speakers. Yeah. Wait lang, ha? May mahilig mag-drawing, uh, drawing, eh. Ayan. And so, again, kindly uh, refrain from uh, turning on your yung microphones. Yan. At saka yung, yan. Okay. And so, the code shall address the lawful, ethical, and professional conduct for the practice of real estate service practitioners. Again, if you have any questions, just write it in the chat box. And uh, hopefully during our lecture and maybe during halftime or during the end, we'll be able to answer it. Yeah. So for now, let's just limit yung mga uh, questions with regards to the code of ethics. Yeah. If we have time, we can uh, probably touch on other items. Yeah. Uh, later this afternoon, um, yung lecture natin this morning will be 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Later in the afternoon, please do come back because you are required to attend all uh, three days of our lecture seminar. Uh, later in the afternoon, we will be having uh, titling and documentation problems and then uh, taxation uh, topics. So just in case you have uh, uh, questions on titling, uh, documentation, and then uh, taxation, yeah. so yun yung later. So, ano yung mention sa Code of Ethics? Section 3G, Real Estate Service Practitioner, shall refer to and consist of the following. So, af, as of section, as per Section 3G of RA 9646, the Real Estate Service Practitioner shall refer to and consist of the following. The Real Estate Consultant, the Real Estate Appraiser, the Real Estate Assessor, the Real Estate Broker, and the Real Estate Salesperson. So, do take note na ito are uh, titles protected under RA 9646. So, baka mamaya mayroon sa inyong maglagay sa calling card na real estate consultant or property consultant. Yan. So, please do take note na protected ito mga words na to. So, hindi siya basta-basta pwedeng gamitin unless you are a licensed consultant, a licensed appraiser. A licensed broker. Yan. Yung assessor kasi, is, uh, yung licensing niya is under uh, the appraiser's license. So if you'll no notice na all city assessors full-time must be licensed real estate appraisers. So lahat ng city assessors sa inyong munisipyo or syudad, kailangan silang licensed real estate appraisers para maging full-time real estate assessors. So, uh, I used to teach uh, BSREM uh, and then uh, meron kami mga students, especially in the provinces, na under the office of the city assessor's office. So, ito yung mga assistant assessor or OIC assessor. So currently, they are uh, taking up BSREM because the only way that they will become full-time real, real estate assessors or city assessors will be for them to graduate BSREM to take the board and pass the appraiser's board of exams. Yeah. Uh, continuing on, uh, real estate broker and real estate salesperson. So let me explain. Ano ba itong mga ito? No? 
Yan. So, real estate consultant. So, sino ba tong real estate consultant na to? Ay, sir, yun yung, ano, yung nagbebenta. Yan. So, kasi yun ang mga nagiging, ano, no? Uh, misnomer o yung mga uh, widely used. Kasi, kasi pag sinabing consultant, para wow, high tech, ano? Or parang, wow, bigatin. So, kadalasan yung mga sales personnel or salesperson or yung, minsan yung ibang developers nilalagay sa calling card, ah, ano, property consultant. Yan, parang gandang tignan, ano? Property consultant. Parang may kinukonsulta sa iyo. So, yan. So, do take note na protected yung word na consultant. So, only licensed real estate consultants uh, in the field of real estate are uh, are entitled to use that word. So, real estate consultant. A duly registered and licensed natural person who for a professional fee, compensation, or other valuable consideration offers or renders professional advice and judgment on the acquisition, enhancement, preservation, utilization, or disposition of lands or improvements thereon, and to the conception, planning, management, and development of real estate projects. So in short, the real estate consultant is in charge of looking at properties and developments on a macro level or on a bigger scale. So sila yung mga uh, kinukonsulta regarding uh, big chunks of properties or yung commercial business districts, uh, cities, itong uh, comprehensive land use programs. Yan. So kadalasan, most of the consultants are involved in those big projects. Yan. Because planning a city is uh, entirely different from planning a house and lot. Yan. So in cities, when you plan cities, kailangan uh, machi-check mo kung nasan yung mga open spaces. You need to check yung mga water table. Baka mamaya gawa ka lang ng gawa, not knowing na wala na palang tubig. Yan. Uh, traffic control. Uh, yung uh, planning ng mga air. Yan. Baka mamaya sobrang masikip na yung city na ginagawa mo. So nawala ng hangin na pumapasok. Yan. Uh, yung uh, sewage and waste, yan kasama yung sa pinag-aaralan ng uh, real estate consultant. Number two, real estate appraiser. The real estate appraiser is a duly registered and licensed natural person who, for a professional fee, compensation, or other valuable consideration, performs or renders or offers to perform services in estimating and arriving at an opinion of or acts as an expert on real estate values, such services of which shall be finally rendered by the preparation of the report in an acceptable written form. In short, the real estate appraiser answers the question, what is the value of the property or the development? Yan. So, pag natang nila na, magkano na kaya ang value ng property namin dito sa may uh, uh, Paranaque? dito sa may uh, Tagig, dito sa may uh, Muntinlupa, sa Navota, sa Cebu, sa Davao. Yan. So yung real estate appraiser uh, will be the proper person to answer these questions. And then the uh, value should be uh, presented in an acceptable written form. So, ano yung written form na yan? Ayan. Later, pakita natin yan. Anyway, yan. So, what is the most difficult item to value? Yan. So, uh, as, an, as a real estate appraiser, yan. So, nag appraise kami ng mga properties, ng mga condominiums, yan. Ang pinakamahirap lang talaga i-value. Yan. Alam nyo kung ano to? Yan. Sentimental value. Yan ang sometimes, may, dyan kami nagkakaroon ng difficulty uh, with our clients because iba yung value nila nung sentimental value. Yung tipong pag tinanong kami na, uh, Sir, magkano na ba itong ano namin, itong uh, uh, 60 years old na bahay? Ay, ma'am, 60 years na po yan. Medyo may mga ano na yan. Kailangan na i-upgrade yung mga electricals niyan. Baka mami, asbestos pipe pa yan, wala, wala, na, wala pa siya mga sprinkler system, etc. etc. Ma'am, actually, ma'am, halos close to zero na po yung value niyan eh. Ganun? Eh, material expertise pa naman to ah. Maganda pa naman to eh. I'm sure you, 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 you're uh, na-experience na rin yan. Ano? May binibentang lumang bahay at lupa ano, na pinapabenta sa inyo. Mag-google ka, matang mahal. 
ah, ba eh, okay pa naman itong bahay namin. Kita mo, matatitirang pa ito. Kita mo, walang tulo. Ayan, bagong, itong bubong na ito, bagong ano to, bagong balto ng bubong, bagong pinta. Ayan, bakit, ba't, ba't mahal pa? Eh, lumanan man yung bahay. Oo, pero lumang, pero natitirhan pa. Ayan, so yun ang sometimes mahirap. Ano. So, for those, kasi ang, ang, may, ang difficulty lang doon is, yes, the house may have value to the owners, but for the buyers, baka wala ng value yun. Because baka mamaya ang gagawin lang ng buyer is gigibain lang yung bahay, didemolish lang. At ang important lang doon is yung lupa. In the end, land is the most important uh, asset doon sa, doon sa example na yun. Ano? So the only way that the property or the house will have value is for you to be able to find a buyer na kapag makita yung bahay, sabihin, ayun, eksakto, yan ang gusto kong bahay, yan ang design na gusto ko ng bahay, yan yung gusto kong itsura ng pinto, yung nara, tapos yung kulay red na pinto, yan, eksaktong eksakto, yan, magkano ba yan? Ah, yan ba yung presyo? Ay, tamang-tama, ang ganda ng presyo, kasi eksaktong eksakto. Yan, tanong is, ilan yung mga times na makakahap ka ng tao na pag makita yung lumang bahay, sabi niya, eksaktong eksaktong hinahanap ko na yan. Yan, di ba? So, yun. Sentimental value. So, next, the real estate assessor. The real estate assessor is a duly registered and licensed natural person who works in a local government unit and performs appraisal and assessment of real estate properties, including plants, equipment, and machineries, essentially for taxation purposes. Yan. Yan. Matanong ko lang nga. Yan. So, para to test na rin kung nakikinig pa rin kayo. Yan. Uh, sa chat box, pakisagot lang nga po kung nabayaran nyo na ba yung amilyar ninyo for 2021? Amilyar or ito yung RPT na tinatawag. Nabayaran nyo na ba for 2021? Yan. Palagay lang po sa chat box. Para lang malaman na. Baka mamay hindi pa kayo nakapagbayad. Ano? Yan. So, yan. May nag yes na. Yan. Again, ano, uh, sabihin, sir, eh, pandemic. Oo nga, kahit ako, kahit pandemic, eh, ano natin yan, eh, kailangan bayaran. So, kapag meron kayong property, condominium, lote, idle land, agricultural land, uh, house and lot, yan, lahat po, kailangan po binabayaran yang amilyar. Ito po yung tinatawag na amilyar, tinatawag nila, amilyar or real property taxes or RPT. Yan, so, I'm glad naman na marami na nakapagbayad. Ayan. So usually ano, ang nangyayari kasi kadalasan ng mga LGUs, or local government units, uh, if you pay in advance or one year in advance, kadalasan meron kang 20% discount. So usually nagsimula sila mga December, yan. So noong December 1 hanggang December 30, if you pay yung for 2021 na real property taxes for the entire year, you will get 20% discount. Ba? Malaki rin yung 20% discount. Take note, yung a milyar tsaka RPT na yan, babayaran at babayaran mo rin yan. Eh. So, alam ko mahirap. Alam ko malaki-laki rin. Lalo pag may house and lot ka, yan, malaki-laki rin yun. Pero isipin mo, pag binayaran mo ng in advance, you will get 20% discount. Sayang din yun eh, babayaran at babayaran mo rin yan. Parang ano yun, parang kuryente tsaka tubig. Eh, babayaran mo rin naman. So, just imagine, ano, kung yung kuryente na babayaran mo naman talaga is mag-offer sila ng 20% discount kung babayaran mo in advance, eh, why not take it? Sayang din, ano. Total, no choice. Babayaran mo rin naman. So, yan. For those of you na hindi pa nakapagbayad, some government agencies, like for example, sa Quezon City, I believe, yung 20% discount nila extends up to end of March. Ayan. So, may 20% discount until end of March. And for those of you na meron mga properties in the provinces na uh, ayan, meron ako that before ano, sa may Batangas na ginagawa ko lang na every year pupunta ako sa Batangas para lang magbayad ng milyar. At the same time, medyo ano rin ang din. Medyo relax-relax na rin. Parang road trip na lang din ginagawa ko. No? Pagdating sa mga ganun. So, Uh, take note, in some areas, you can actually pay your uh, property taxes two years, three years in advance. 
Tapos meron pa rin siyang discount. So pwede mo siyang i-advance na. So just in case baka meron kayong mga property sa sa Cebu, sa Batanga, sa Davao na na kailangan yung bayaran. Yan. So just in case pwede niyo siyang bayaran in advance. So pwede pwede. Yan. Total bayaran pa rin naman yan. So yan. Which leads me to yung first uh, rocket yan, or your first sideline, kadalasan ng real estate salesperson. Kasi usually, this is what happens, ano to, uh, ano to, reality check. Usually kapag mga yan, October, November, yan, medyo... Ang sakit sa tenga, no? May biglang umano. Uh, ayan, na nawala ako. Ayan. So, usually, you know, uh, October, November, December, usually, you know, usually may may konting slowdown ng uh, property selling usually during this time. Kasi pag Pasko, uh, people are more inclined to buying mga mga regalo, mga bagong TV, bagong oven, bagong refrigerator usually pag mga December no or kadalasan yung mga pinangraraffle yan yung mga 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 karaoke machine yan yung mga pinangraraffle ano so usually may may counting slowdown lang usually pag mga ganun November December so usually in advice ko for our sales person so no itong RPT is magandang uh, sideline ito so but maganda ito so usually, no, if you sell properties in a condominium or nasa even in your own villages, ano, pati nyo katukin lahat ng mga ng mga kapit bahay nyo na ma'am. Reminder ko lang po, uh, since real estate sa real estate po, uh, kailangan po nating bayaran yung ating uh, amilyar for 2021. So baka lang po gusto nyo ano as part of my services. Uh, kung gusto nyo po, pwede naman po ako, ako na lang po ang magbayad para sa inyo. Kailangan ko lang naman po yung uh, luma, ninyo, yung uh, receipt or updated receipt ninyo from uh, last year. Uh, tapos po, ang babayaran naman po for this year ay parehas lang din naman. Uh, most of the uh, LGUs, halos parehas pa rin naman. Ano? So, pwede yung i-offer yung services na kayo na mismo ang magbabayad. And then you can... Uh, get a small fee. Yan, small fee. So, ano small fee na yun? 100 pesos, 200 pesos. Isipin nyo, 100, ilagay nyo sa, for example, sa 200 na lang. 200 pesos per kapit bahay. Per kapit bahay. Tapos, ilagay mo na sa lima na kapit bahay. Ang sabihin, o oh, sige, ikaw na lang. So, isipin mo, 5 times 200, 1,000 pesos na yan. ba? So, okay na rin na sideline, diba? Tapos, pupunta... Anyway, pupunta ka rin naman sa LGU, sa City Hall, sa munisipyo. Kasi babayaran mo rin naman yung amilyar mo eh. So, why not magsama ka na? ba? So, ano advantages sabihin ng kaibahin mo? Ay, hindi ako na lang. Ako, ah, sige po. Okay lang po. Na, kayo lang din naman. Eh, lalo naman ngayon. Hirap kayo. Pandemic. Diba? Pipila kayo. May social distancing. Di mo lang may mga katabi mo. <laughs> Yan. So, ako, even kahit walang pandemic, ano, kadalasan ang haba naman talaga ng totoo. Sa totoo lang, ang mahaba yung pila sa, ano, sa LGU, pagbabayad ng sa City Assessor's Office, medyo mahaba rin eh. So, ma'am, pwede naman kayong magbayad. Kaya lang po, kung may, lalo po ngayon, kung may trabaho kayo, sipin nyo po, baka naman, baka kailangan nyo po mag-absent ng half day or mag-leave ng half day para lang bayaran yung amilyar nyo. Eh, magkano yung babayaran ninyo yung amilyar? Magkano yung mababawas sa, ano nyo, sweldo? Sayang lang, samantalang mabako, minimum lang naman. 100, 200 pesos, ba? So, isipin mo naman kung 10 yung nakuha mo sa 200, si 2,000 pesos kagad. So, yan. Yan yung mga sample na, ano natin, sidelines na pwede natin magamit. Yan. At the same time, pwede yung sabihin na, ma'am, pag nagbayad po kayo ngayong maaga, meron po 20% discount. So, yung na-discount ninyo, ninyo na 20%, na yun na rin yung fee ko, halos wala rin po nabawas. Pero at least, hindi na kayo nakapunta doon. Hindi na kayo nainitan, hindi na kayo napawisan, hindi na nasayang yung half-day leave ninyo. Yan. Next, number four, real estate broker. Real estate broker is a duly registered and licensed natural person who, for a professional fee, commission, or other valuable consideration, acts as an agent of a party in a real estate transaction to... Yan. So, ito po yung nakalagay sa RA9646 na i-discuss din po uh, in-depth ng uh, ating fellow consultant, Rick Bayaw. I, see, I believe uh, Saturday yata. I believe Saturday or Friday niya i-discuss. So, papahapyawan lang natin dito sa Code of Ethics since na-mention siya sa Code of Ethics. Yan. 
So, real estate broker, ito yung parang uh, uh, kapartner ni real estate salesperson. So, parang Batman and Robin siya. So, yung broker si Batman, si salesperson si Robin. So, tulung-tulungan yan. So, lahat ng ginagawa ni, bro, ni salesperson is according sa ginagawa rin ni uh, real estate broker. Yan. So, again, reminder lang po sa may ano, sa microphone. Ano. Yan. So, uh, for a professional fee, commission, or other valuable consideration. Yan. Yan. So, you know, kuha ng broker at salesperson. Yan. Pera. Ay, saan lang? Ba't, ba't parang bare-bare lang. Yan. Bare-bare. Yan. Yan. Mas maganda. No? Pera. Yan. Professional fee. Take note. Nakalagay sa RA9646. Medyo maano yung batas. Ano? Professional fee. Yan. Kasi ito yung tawag dyan, professional fee. Yan. Ito yung pampalit do sa laway, di ba? Kasi sabi nila, nako, eh, pagkahit ano, laway lang ang puhunan yan, di ba? Laway-laway lang yan. So, laway-laway lang daw yan. Professional fee, yan. Commission or other valuable consideration, yan. Yan. Or pwedeng kotse. Pwede ba yan? Ay, wala nga ako nakuha ang commission dyan eh. Binigyan lang ako ng dalawang kotse. Anin ko naman ng dalawang kotse. So, yung, ano, yung deal kanina, nako, Wala, wala akong komisyon. Ni Singko, walang binigay sa akin yung may-ari. Kuripo talaga. Binigay sa akin, dalawang kotse. Ba naman yan? Wala akong komisyon. Kotse, binigay sa akin. Pero hindi komisyon yan. Kotse yan eh. Ayan. Naku, wala nga binigay. Walang binigay na kotse. Walang binigay na na pera. Wala. Binigay lang ako ng, ano, ng alahas, ng jewelry, ng ano, 10 karat diamond with sapphire and rubies. Yun lang binigay sa akin. Wala. Kuripot yung ano na yan, yung seller na yan. Tapos sa paghihirap ko, wala, walang binigay na komisyon. Yan, naku. Binigay sa akin yung lumang bahay sa Forbes Park. Isipin mo, yun, ko yung lumang bahay sa Forbes Park na binigay sa akin. Hirap ko, di ba? Isang buwan ko pinaghirapan yung benta na yun. Tapos yung kuripot na seller, eh, binigyan lang ako ng isang bahay sa Forbes Park. Aanin ko naman yun. Yan, di ba? Yan, so... Ano yung mga duties and responsibilities ng broker na extended din sa salesperson? Yan. List. Yan. Ililista yung properties. I-advertise yung properties. I-mediate. Yan. Siya yung middleman na ipag-usap, ipopromote sa mga social media. Uh, so, solicit. Uh, ma'am, kakatok-katok ma'am. Bibili po kayo ng bahay at lupa. Ma'am, baka gusto po bilang kondo. Yan. Offer. Yan, i-offer yung bahay at lupa for sale, i-negotiate, ito yung pag-deal na siya sa loob, or effect the meeting of the minds on. Yan, ba't ba kailangan natin malaman itong mga to? Kasi ito yung mga nasasaad sa batas. Kasi nga, marami nagsasabi na, ay, hindi naman po ako nagbebenta eh. Ano lang ako dun, uh, pinag-meet ko lang po yung uh, buyer at saka seller. Yan, so ako po yung ano lang, uh, hindi naman po talaga ako nag-aahente. Uh, ano ko lang kasi kamag-anak ko lang, tapos yung isa kapitbahay, nabalitaan ko na nagbebenta yung isa, tapos ako lang po yung naki, ano, naki, uh, naging instrumento para magkakilala yung dalawa. Yan, so ikaw yung nagbimediate. Yan. So, ba't pa nilalagay sa batas? Para ma ma-distinguish kung ano yung mga, mga acts that fall under uh, selling. Yan. Two, yan. effect the meeting of the minds on the sale, purchase, lease, exchange, mortgage, or joint venture, or other similar transactions on real estate or any interest therein. Yan. Kasi nga nalaman natin na yung sa batas kasi maraming sabi, ay hindi naman ako nag-aahente, ano lang yan eh, part-time yan. So part-time, ah, ano lang yan, part-time pero nakaka, ano na, isang daan na benta, yan, part-time na. No? So for those of you na part-timers pa rin pero ang dami lang na benta, so ang advice ko lang is, uh, yun na, tulad na sinabi ni, uh, ni President Emmy uh, Polido, ay mag ano ka na, mag-legal ka na. Mabuti na yung ano, legal ka na. yung mga nakabenta na ng marami. Marami yung mga, mga, marami mga balitan. Meron iba dyan na top seller na or million-million na yung nabibenta. Pero hanggang ngayon, hindi pa nagpapa-accredit ano, as a salesperson o nagpapa-license as a broker. Uh, advice ko lang ano, na if, you're, if this business, this real estate profession is doing... Uh, very good for you. Might as well become uh, legit na 
become accredited na, become licensed na kung kinakailangan. Kasi mahirap na, baka mamaya mahuli pa. I'm not saying na, hindi ko kayo nakikita natakot. Ano. Pero pag kumikita ka naman sa isang negosyo, gayon man ang legal. Kasi mahirap na, baka mamaya eh, matiming yan ka. So, uh, again, hindi naman ako na nanakot. Ano. Pero yung si, yung, uh, si Secret, under sa sa leadership ni Secretary Del Rosario ng DHSUD o itinatawag na Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, medyo stricto na sila. Ha? Yan. So, warn lang. Ha? Warning ko lang, medyo stricto na sila. So, baka mamaya sayang yung pinaghirapan ninyo. Ano ba naman yung umaten ka lang naman itong lecture na to, tapos magpa-accredit sa PRC, tapos magpa-register under DHSUD. Yan. So, konting ano lang naman to konting seminar, konting uh, uh, ano lang naman siya. Uh, konting uh, uh, mga requirements. Yan. Yan lang. Nabasa ko ba yan? Parang hindi. Yan. Uh, duly, uh, yan. So, real estate salesperson. Yan. So, tayo po yan. Uh, duly accredited. Yan. So, take note, ano? yung salespersons are accredited. Wala po tayong licensed real estate salesperson. Kasi minikita ko dyan sa mga sa Facebook, sa Twitter, yan, sa TikTok, yan, uh, sa YouTube, licensed salesperson. So take note po, wala pong licensed salesperson. Wala pong licensure exam ang salesperson. Ito po ay accreditation po lamang. Accredited salesperson po. So after po nito, yung seminar certificate plus yung mga uh, transcript of records, plus uh, uh, PSA or uh, PSA na birth certificate, marriage certificate, ID pictures, uh, application forms, broker uh, documents. Yan po isasabit po sa PRC, uh, Professional Regulation Commission. Tapos po, pag nareceive po ng PRC, may babayaran po na maliit lang po na fee, parang 450 or 600, maliit lang po yun. Tapos po, mag-antay lang po ng uh, reply from PRC. Tapos po nun, magkakaroon ng oath-taking. Yan, virtual oath-taking na po tayo. So, magkakaroon po ng virtual oath-taking. At pagkatapos po nun, bibigyan po kayo ng uh, uh, number, accreditation number na pwede pong i-display sa kapag nagpo-post kayo ng advertisement. Yan, pwede pong i-post lang po yun. yun. So, accredited salesperson po. Wala po siyang licensure accredited salesperson who performs services for or in behalf of a real estate broker who is a registered and licensed professional regulatory board of real estate service for or in expectation of a share in the commission, professional fee, compensation, or other valuable consideration. So again, ano, parang Batman and Robin po, partner po si salesperson at saka si broker. Yeah. So later on, probably on uh, tomorrow or Saturday, explain po further itong relationship ni broker at saka sales person. Yan po. So in the meantime, yan po, uh, kailangan po magpa-credit sa PRC yung mga sales person para po makakuha po tayo ng accreditation number. Kasi nga po, talo din sinabi po ni Ms. Uh, uh, Emmy, uh, kailangan po yung accreditation number po yan kapag nagpapalagay tayo ng mga advertisements. Uh, take note po, sabi, sabi lang na, ng mga iba dyan na mala, medyo malalakas sa loob na, de, okay lang yan, wala namang hulihan yan. So take note, digital na po tayo ngayon. So the fact na nag-advertise ka sa Facebook, nakita ng buong mundo, madali lang pong screenshot po yan. So pag na-screenshot po yan, yan that will already uh, be part ng mga proof Ayan. So, isipin nyo pag na-screenshot yung name ninyo, ayan. tapos eh, ma-check lang sa records ng DHSUD or ng PRC, madaling-madali lang po makita po yun. Ayan. Again, di mo na po na nat natatakot pero uh, lalo po for those na kumikita na po dito sa real estate na to, ayan, ano ba naman po yung gawin na po nating legal? Yun lang naman po. Ayan. So, at the same time po, protection nyo na rin po to against sa broker. Uh, Again, ano, marami tayo, since maraming kaperahan itong uh, profession natin, marami ring mga tao na wala itong mga code of ethics na to. So, mabuti na po na sigurado na po tayo. Yan. Kaya po, just in case, knock on wood, na huwag naman po sana mangyari na magkaroon ng mga konting mga problema. At least, eh, kapag uh, nag-file po tayo ng mga kaso, masasabi natin na accredited salesperson po tayo na ayon sa batas ay allowed naman po tayong magbenta. Yan po. 
mahirap naman mag-complain sa sa batas tapos eh, tayo mismo wala sa batas. Yan. So ano po ba yung minention itong uh, RA 9646? Ah, sorry, ng Code of Ethics, Section 27, Acts Constituting the Practice of Real Estate Service. Any single act or transaction embraced within the provisions of Section 3G hereof as performed by real estate service practitioners shall constitute an act of engaging in the practice of real estate service. Yung sinabi natin, yung list, uh, uh, mediate, promote, advertise, yan. Yun po yung mga acts uh, or transactions considered as a practice of real estate service. So yun yung sabi nila na, ay hindi, ano, nakilala ko lang si Kumari, pinakalala kay Kumpare, tapos yun na, yun na yun, di ba? Tapos eh, binigyan ako ng balato, ayan. Hindi naman commission yun, balato yun eh, ayan. So, yun yung mga iba mga terms, ano, sa so, take note, nakalagid sa ano natin, ano, professional fee, commission, or other valuable consideration. Ayan, na-mention pa sa Code of Ethics, Section 32, Corporate Practice of Real Estate Service, no partnership or corporation shall engage in the business of real estate service unless it is duly registered with the SEC. Yan. So, yung pag sumasali po kayo mga marketing companies, make sure po na SEC registered sila. Yan. So, there shall be at least one licensed broker for every 20 salesperson. So, one licensed real estate broker is allowed to handle uh, a maximum of 20 salespersons. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, itong mga to will be discussed uh, on RESA topics, Real Estate Service Act. Yeah. So, currently right now, as of January 2020, uh, prior to the pandemic, yeah, the brokers, we have around 32,000 entire Philippines, appraisers, 10,650, consultants, around 329. Uh, salespersons, uh, wala pa tayong final number. Take note, yung salespersons kasi is yearly. Yearly yung registration ng salespersons. Unlike kapag brokers, appraisers, and consultants, every three years ang uh, ano yan, eh, renewal. So, so for salespersons, uh, annual ang renewal niyan. Yan. So again, and for salespersons, yan, kailangan siya ng uh, yan. So para maging broker, yan, for those of you na salesperson na gusto maging bro licensed real estate broker, yan, kailangan BSREM na. Yan. Uh, quick rundown lang, ito yung mga schools that are offering uh, BSREM, Real Estate Management. So again, you need to be a graduate of BSREM to be able to take the board exam for real estate brokers, appraisers, and then eventually consultants. So, i-scheme ko lang to. Yan. So, uh, this is from the website finduniversity.ph. Uh, I believe I got this information para mga 2016, 2017. So, kindly verify and check kung tama pa rin itong data na to especially yung mga tuition, kasi nga, new normal na, baka nagbago, baka tumaas, baka bumaba, it's best to go to uh, yung schools near you, baka mamaya nag-offer na sila ng BSREM, and then inquire from the dean ng, B ng real estate management para malaman yung mga course curriculum. Yan. PCU, uh, Trinity University of Asia, I Academy, De La Salle, yan, PLM, MLQU, yan, Lyceum of Alabang, New Era University, yan, ABE. Again, I'll get in touch with these schools para malaman kung available pa yung BSREM course, para malaman nyo rin kung how much talaga yung tuition fee. Yan. So always verify kung tama yung mga information. Yan, Gardner College, yan, dito ako nagturo ng BSREM. Uh, located sa may SM North Edge ito. Uh, AYAC, Cavite Campus, AMA University sa Batangas, AMA University sa Lipa, Lyceum of the Philippines, National College of Science Technology sa Dasma, ABE College sa Lucena, uh, Brookfield College sa Cavite, Systems Plus sa Pampanga, University of Mindanao, yan. University of Cebu, sa alam ko University of San Carlos is also offering, ano. So kindly double check and uh, 
please see also kung meron silang online. So for those of you who wants to become licensed estate brokers, actually maganda yung timing ngayon because kadalasan yung mga schools na to are offering online classes. So ito yung nagiging problem when I was teaching before prior to the pandemic. Yung mga students namin uh, are coming from kusaan saan. So nahirapan sila mag-travel papunta sa school kasi nga sa morning, real estate salesperson sila. Sa gabi, nag-aaral sila. So for those of you na nagsabi na, Sir, nakakaya naman mag-aaral. Eh, ano na ako? Eh, lagpas 30 na ako. Lagpas 40, lagpas 50. Uh, let me tell you, yung oldest student ko nasa mga 68 years old yata. Yung oldest student ko. So matagal na siyang uh, salesperson at saka marami nang kinita na rin. Yan. At at uh, same time, retiree lang siya. So, naisip niyang mag-aral para maging licensed broker. Yan. Central Philippine University sa Iloilo, uh, St. Lasal sa Bacolod, University of Bacolod Dilleras, Xavier University, yan. St. Joseph. So, marami ng schools ang nag-offer ng BSREM. So, just in case you want to enroll. Yan. Yeah. So again, if you have questions, ano, kindly place it in the chat box para lang ma-review natin. And then later on, uh, we will try to answer them. So general provisions and declaration of principles ng Code of Ethics. Yan. So ito pa lang talaga. So section 1, every real estate service practitioner shall uphold the Constitution and the laws of the Republic of the Philippines. Section 2, the practitioner shall exercise the profession with utmost, yeah, take note, integrity, fidelity, responsibility, sincerity, respect, and courtesy. Yan po. The practitioner shall comply with the policies, rules, and regulations promulgated by the board and the commission. Article 2, general provisions and declaration of principles. Section 4, the practitioner shall uphold the generally accepted local and international technical and ethical standards related to the practice of the profession. Kasi nga dapat ano tayo, uh, globally competitive. Section 5, the practitioner shall promote the values of camaraderie, unity, and synergy in his or her professional relationship. Yan, sama-sama po tayo. Iisang uh, bangka lang po tayo, ika nga, nung kanta. So, Article 3, Professional Rules of Conduct and Responsibilities. Section 1, to the government. The practitioner shall always set a good example as a responsible, law-abiding citizen. So, sunod po tayo sa batas palagi. Practitioner shall secure all necessary licenses, permits and authority as may be required by law, ordinance, or rules and regulations. Yan po. Again, uh, reminder na po for those na nagsimula na ng pagbebenta at doon sa mga nakapagbenta na ng napakarami na po. Yan po. At ngayon lang papa uh, accredit at magpapa officially uh, kumuha ng dokumento uh, Congratulations po at salamat po sa pagtugon uh, ng uh, industriya para po ma-legalize po. Especially po, again, ano sa mga kumita na. So, uh, yun. So, again, mabuti na po yung nasa legal po tayo. No? So, mahirap yung parang, yung parang, ano, yung parang illegal vendor ka na natatakot ka na pag may dumating na pulis, eh, tatakbo-takbukan, di ba? Maganda yung medyo legal at meron tayong dokumento para... Medyo panatag yung kalooban natin. Kasi sa naman yung pinaghirapan natin kung matatangay lang. Yan po. The practitioner shall pay correct taxes and fees required by the law. They shall not encourage, tolerate, or facilitate, or participate directly or indirectly in the evasion or illegal reduction of any payments that is due to the government. Yan po. So, tulong na rin po sa gobyerno natin. Whether or not gusto nyo po yung gobyerno or hindi, Eh, gobyerno pa rin natin yan. Sama-sama rin po tayo dyan. Iisang bangka lang din po tayo. Yan po. So, section 2, to the general public. The practitioner shall contribute to the promotion of the common good by engaging in social responsibility activities and initiatives. The practitioner shall cooperate 
with the government and the IPO in protecting the public against fraud, misrepresentation, and unethical practices of licensed, unlicensed, and unauthorized individuals or parties that adversely affect the integrity of the profession. So ito na nga po yung ginagawa ng uh, DHSUD under the leadership of Secretary uh, Del Rosario. So minomonitor na po niya yung mga uh, illegal or unauthorized uh, developers and sellers po na nakakasira po ng industriya natin. So kung mapapansin niyo po, kahit na-search niyo po doon sa mga mga YouTube, ano, may mga real estate scams na nauusa na naman po ulit. Ito yung mga Sanla Titulo Scheme. Yan. So, ingat-ingat lang po tayo sa mga ganyan. Kaya po, damay-damay na po tayo dyan. Ano, yung, mga, yung mga nagpapasanla ng mga titulo. So, kindly make sure na legal po lahat yan. Sabi nga nila, if it's uh, too good to be true, then uh, please double check. Yeah. So, the practitioner shall enhance his or her competency proficiency and expertise in the practice by keeping abreast of the latest trends and developments uh, in the field of real estate service through the involvement in continuing professional development activities. Yan po. Aral-aral din kung may time. Yan. So usually yung ginagawa po natin, itong pong first part po ninyo, itong uh, New Salesperson's uh, Accreditation Seminar. Uh, like what I said, every year po ang uh, renewal ng salesperson. So, next year po, uh, meron po kayong renewal, pero yung renewal seminar nyo po ay uh, ano na lang. Hindi na po ito mga topics na uh, na take up natin. Medyo advanced level topics na po. Yan. The practitioner shall participate in the proactive development of real estate service by uh, imparting knowledge, technical training, experiences, studies, or research, except those that are deemed classified or confidential, which may only be disclosed upon the consent of the parties concerned or lawful order of competent authorities. To the client, yan, responsibility to the client, the practitioner, yan, tayo po yung practitioner na minimension dito, shall be honest, yan po, honest. Diba po, Mr. Guevara? Yan. Honest and trustworthy and shall observe sincerity, impartiality, fairness, and loyalty in his or her professional practice. The practitioner shall... Uh, ilang, tanggalin ko rin nagsulat. Ayan. The practitioner shall exercise good faith in protecting and promoting the interest of the, of the client vis-a-vis -vis that of the parties concerned. Good faith in protecting and promoting the interest of the client. Yan. Tandaan po natin when dealing with our clients and with our fellow uh, practitioners. Yan po. In good faith lang po. Isipin po natin yung nakakabuti para sa atin pong lahat. Yan. Huwag po yung para lang makaloko, makadaya, makaisa, makatake advantage po. Tandaan nyo po ito, no? Uh, ito pong industry natin sa real estate, napakaliit lang po nitong industry nito. Napakaliit. Inisip nyo po na, ay, nako, ang laki-laki naman to, di mo na may kilala. Ay, nako po, believe you me po, maliit lang po itong industry natin. Pag may ginawa kang medyo hindi ka nais-nais, madali siyang mabalita sa buong industriya. Ang liit lang po itong industry nito. Magka magiging magkakakilakilala lang nandin tayo sa industriya nito. Napakaliit lang po. Mabilis po ang balita dito sa industriya natin kasi nga napakaliit lang po. The practitioner shall strictly observe client practitioner confidentiality. Yan po. Pag may sinabi po sa inyo yung kliente, eh, sa inyo na lang po yun. Huwag nyo pong pagchismisan na, na yung kliente yung artista, eh, may isa, iba na palang kinakasama, na akala ninyo is uh, happily married pa pala sila, may tatlong anak, ayun pala, mayroon pa pala siyang anak sa labas, ayun po. So, uh, always uh, strictly observe client and practitioner confidentiality. The practitioner shall fully and trustfully disclose all pertinent and material facts involved in the engagement. The practitioner shall charge or collect professional fee which is fair and reasonable in accordance with the real estate industry practice. So in short po, wag na po tayo mag-overprice or overcharge. 
Yan po. Kasi nakakasira rin po itong overpriced and overcharge. Lalo na po kapag ikaw ang nag-overpriced at nag-overcharge at nalaman ng buyer na, ba't sa iyo ang mahal-mahal? Dito sa kabilang ahente, napakamura. Yan. So, mas nakakaya. Mas nakikita nila na parang pinatungan ninyo. Tongpats. Yan. So, yan po. Kung ano lang po yung tama at saka nararapat. The practitioner shall not accept professional fees or valuable consideration from other parties unless with full disclosure and permission from the client. Yan po. So in short po, yung conflicts of interest. Pili na po kayo kung saan side po kayo. Buyer side po ba kayo or seller side? Sometimes po kasi minsan napakaswerte nyo po. Eh. Pag napakaswerte po natin na ikaw ang nakahalap ng buyer, ikaw ang nakahalap ng seller, nako po jackpot yung ganun, di ba? Nagbebenta ka, sa'yo yung buyer, sa'yo yung seller. So, sabi nyo, buong commission, sa'yo lang. Solong-solo mo. Kaya lang, itong problema. Sabi nung uh, seller, eh, binibenta ko tong condominium ko na 10 million. Pero pag tumawag, na, pag tumawag ng 8 million, pwede na. Yan. So, alam mo na, na minimum niya 8, pero selling niya 10. So, ito namang buyer mo, sabi na, naghahap siya ng condo, ang budget lang niya 9. Kaya lang, yung in-offer mo, 10. So, isipin mo, ah, pwede, di ba? So, at least, nakabuti pa yan na, na yung buyer ko, hanggang 9 million yung budget, yung seller ko, pwede ibigay ng 8. Ano kaya ang bibigay ko? Yung sa 8 or sa 9 million? Ikaw nung isip mo, siguro sa 9, pwede na, hindi na masama yun. Kasi yung commission ko, percentage. Eh. So, pag sa 8 million, sayang din yung sayang din yung additional commission na makukuha ko sa matang sa 9, eh happy naman sila pareho. So, pwede na siguro sa 9. Yan. So, always uh, pag mga ganyan scenario sa ano, so always uh, bear in mind kung anong side kayo, buyer side or seller side. So, sometimes kasi uh, makakabuti ka sa seller, minsan makakabuti sa buyer. Sometimes kasi pag it's best na rin na alam ni buyer at tsaka ni seller na namamangka ka sa dalawang ilog. Kasi nga, eh, parang lumalabas pareho silang malulugi. Ikaw naman, eh, ikaw yung nahikinabang. So, ang ano lang po niyan is, sa pagdating sa mga conflicts of interest, tulad nga ito nakalagay sa, sa section F, practitioners shall not accept professional fees or valuable consideration from other parties unless, yan, unless with full disclosure and permission from both clients. Yan. So basta alam naman nila, okay lang yun. At least nasabi mo naman, di ba? Yan. Bawal mamangka sa dalawang ilog. Yan. So pili po kayo. Isa lang po. Bawal po yung may ibang kapiling. Yan. Uh, sandali lang. May, may naging kakaproblem. Ano ba tong ano na to? May problema yata yung, la, yung ano ko presentation. Ano? Para makulit, ano? Yan. So, yan. To emphasize lang po. Yan. So, the practitioner shall always maintain transparency in all dealings with the clients. Full disclosure lang po ang kailangan po. Baka mamaya nag-ibenta po kayong bayat lupa. Yan, tatanong ng buyer ninyo, Nako, Mr. Salesperson, Miss Salesperson, okay naman tong proper. Tung, ba't kaya mura? Ay, ma'am, hindi ko lang po. Rush sale lang po. Rush sale po kasi po. Nung, nung isang araw lang po, eh, sa, may ano, May naambush po dyan sa loob ng bahay. May na-massacre po yan. May mga multo-multo po yan. May mga kung ano po dyan. May mga tagas po yan. May mga ano, radioactive nuclear waste po yan sa ilalim. Yan po. Kaya po mura yung bili. Tapos yung buyer mo naman, grabe, mura-mura. Talagang ibang klase. Di ba? So, again, extreme na yung senaryo ko naman po. Ano? Pero yon always maintain transparency in all dealings with the clients. Baka mamay pagsisisi ay lagi nasa huli. Yan. Meron kilalang ganun, ano? Nagben nagbentaan sila ng uh, lupa. Hindi naman niya dinisclose na may multo. Kasi nga may, you know, may medyo may unfortunate uh, incident na nangyari sa bahay na yun. Yan. So, may mga multo-multo daw na na-experience. So, binenta. Tapos nung binenta, yung bagong owner, yun, nalaman niya may mga multo-multo pala. At saka, alam pala sa buong syudad na yun, may, yun pala yung minumulto na bahay. So, Ayan po. Again, extreme case scenarios lang naman po yan, pero full disclosure lang po. Section 4 to the fellow practitioners sa ating mga kapwa na nagbebenta, no? Ayan. 
the practitioner in the exercise of his or her rights and in the performance of his or her duties and responsibilities shall act with fairness, justice, and good faith. Yan po. Ito po, yan po. I-request ko na lang po, please naman po, sana naman po itong mga rebates, sana po eh, maiwasan natin or completely, wag na po natin i-entertain po itong mga rebates na to. Kasi po nakaka-apekto po sa atin lahat po yan, sa ating service fee, professional fee commission na pag nagbebenta po tayo, tapos eh, okay na sana yung deal, biglang humingi yung client ng rebate. Yan. Pag tinanong natin, ay ma'am, pasensya na po eh, hindi po kami nagbibigay ng rebate against po yan sa aming uh, code of ethics po. Eh ba't ganun? Ba't yung isa nagbibigay ng rebate ng 10,000 pesos? Ikaw hindi ka makapagbigay. So baka mamaya eh, dahil lang po sa benta, eh, mapilitan tayo na, o oh, sige, ma'am, magbibigay na lang po ako ng, uh, ng 10,000 na rebate. Ay, ba't 10,000 lang? Isa 10,000 na eh. O oh, ikaw 10,000 lang din. O oh, sige po ma'am, 15,000. Ah, o oh, sige, sige ah. Biglang mamaya yung kabila, nalaman naman na, ha? Nagbigay sa inyo ng 15,000? Ma'am, pabayaan nyo, bibigyan ko po kayo ng 20,000 rebate. Yan. So, nagkabalitan nyo isa. Ah, 20,000? Ako po 30,000. Isa 40,000, 50,000. Hanggang buong commission po, naibigay na. ba diba? Para lang masabi na, ha? Ako nakabenta. May benta ako ng isa. Yun nga lang, wala akong commission. Ang tanong is, ba't ka pa nagbenta? Wala rin namang commission. Tandaan nyo po sa industriya po nito, dyan po tayo kumikita sa professional fees, commissions, and other valuable considerations po. Nakabenta ka nga, wala ka namang komisyon, ba't ka pa nagbenta? Di po ba? Yan. Hindi, para at least may benta ako. At least, eh, pag, at least kahit papano, extended ang contract ko. Yan. So, yan yung mga joke ano, sa mga real estate salespersons. Ano, na, lalo na pag, uh, if you're working with a developer, tas may allowance na 2,000 pesos, 5,000 pesos, di ba? So, ang usually ang contact nila, basta makabenta ka ng kahit isa lang every three months, tuloy-tuloy ang allowance mo. So, yung iba naging reasoning na, ay, okay lang, di ba? Bali na walang komisyon, may allowance naman ako. So, ang, ang ano yan is, eh, sana nagtrabaho ka na lang para kompleto yung, uh, yung monthly allowances mo. Hindi lang yun, may SSS pag-ibig ka pa kapag nagtrabaho ka. Kung yun lang din yung pag-iisip mo, no? So, Again, ano, sana naman po maiwasan na po natin ito. Sana po daanin na lang po natin sa serbisyo, sa amount of service, sa, sa pagwapuhan na lang po, pagandahan po ng lipstick na or something. So, uh, yan lang po. Sana po request ko lang po yung sa mga rebate. Sana po maiwasan na po natin. Kasi po, again, nakakasira po ng negosyo po natin ito. Eh. Kasi pinaghirapan naman po natin yung service fee natin. Ilang... Ilang araw tayo din nakakatulog, di ba po? Ilang beses natin ginagawa yung ating mga advertisements para lang po makabenta. Uh, tapos po, eh, maibabalik lang po sa rebate. So, sayang naman po yung natin. So, para isipin nyo po kung nagtatrabaho po kayo sa isang kumpanya at sabihin sa inyo ng, ng presidente ng kumpanya na Mr. Juan de la Cruz, Ms. Maria Makiling, uh, pwede bang ano, yung sweldo mo ngayon is kalahati na lang? Kasi bibili ng bagong aircon yung may-ari eh. So, pwede bang kalahati na lang muna ang sweldo mo? Ayan po. So, please lang po itong rebate po. Sana po maiwasan po natin. Kahit po simula na po natin sa ating mga sarili po. The practitioner shall respect the dignity, honor, and good reputation and privacy of fellow practitioners. Huwag na po natin pagchismisan yung mga iba natin mga kapwa natin mga uh, mga ahente sa industriya po. no Ayan. Uh, ito personal ano ko lang po sana po yung mga yung mga three way sharing four way sharing five way buong barangay sharing tipong nagkabalitaan yan di po ba Miss uh, Bardinas yan or Mr. Bardinas yan po uh, sana po maiwasan na po natin yung mga yung mga hearing fee na tinatawag na narinig ko nung kapitbahay narinig nung anak narinig nung pinsan yan po. Madas mo maraming mga examples na nangyari po na ganyan ano, na, na uh, ang nangungumisyon is yung ano yung tao to? Yung uh, mag-ama, magpinsan, yung nasa isang bahay lang. Nagkataon lang yung nakilala mo yung anak. Ang, ang may contact nung, nung, nung buyer or nung seller is yung 
kapatid, ng barkada, ng pinsan, ng kapitbahay mo nung grade school. So, sobrang malayo to the point na yung binebenta niyang bahay na 1 million naging 10 million na kasi lahat gusto magpatong-patong-patong na. Ayan. So, sir, minsan di po maiwasan. Uh, malaman na po ang ilang buyer minsan. Yung kasamang buyer, nanghihingi na rin po. Ayan po, yun nga po eh. Sana po uh, maiwasan po natin yung mga uh, ganyan po na usapan. Ako po, usually, siya sabi ko po ganito, no? Minsan po, tama po, minsan hindi po maiwasan, ano? Uh, bago po namin ginagawa po yung deal, tinatanong ko na po na direct po ba kayo sa owner? Kasi kung hindi kayo direct sa owner, mahirap naman po mag, ano, uh, mag-usap. At at the same time, tanong nyo rin, direct ba kayo sa seller? Kasi kung hindi kayo direct, mahirap din naman po. Ayan. So usually yung ginagawa po namin kapag uh, uh, magkikita na or even yung first meeting pala, sinasabi ko lang po, o oh, sige po, ganito gawin natin. Lahat po ng nasa buyer side, punta po tayo dito sa hotel na to. Lahat ng seller side, punta po tayo sa hotel na to. Ganito po ang mangyari po. Ipag meet natin si buyer at seller. First meeting lang po. Dito po tayo sa hotel na to. So, hindi naman po pwede sa karinderia mag-meet. Ah, kaya naman po magbebentahan tayo sa karinderia. Hindi naman po pwede sa McDonald's. At ah, kaya naman sa kliyente po natin na magbibentahan sila sa McDonald's. So, parang mukhang hindi naman po kanais-nais na na ano po na atmosphere yun, na magbebentahan tayo ng lupa properties na milyones tapos po eh sa tabi-tabi lang tayo kailangan medyo maganda-gandang hotel man lang or magandang restaurant so ganito pong gagawin natin lahat po ng present uh, yun po yung kasama sa deal ang gagawin po natin lahat po ng kakainin ng ating mga ng mga bisita po ay sasagutin po nating lahat hati-hati po at the same time po lahat po ng meeting na mangyayari po pagkatapos nung first meeting na yun lahat po dapat in attendance po 100%. Kapag nag-absent po kayo, kahit ang isa lang po, automatic po, wala na po kayo sa usapan. Lahat po ng bayaran po, lahat po, lahat po, hati-hati po yung bayaran. Hindi po pwedeng isa lang po magbabayad. Kasi po, karami yan, ganun din na experience namin. Ano? Ang daming-daming mga hata, ang daming-daming mga kasama sa picture taking, tapos pagdating sa bayaran, naku, walang gusto magbayad. Tapos kung maka-order pa, napakarami. Sakit ano, parang hugot, hugot ba? <laughs> hugot ano, matinding hugot ano. Ayan po, so usually ganun. So kadalasan po, pag ganun po yung sinasabi po namin, kadalasan po lumalabas po talaga ng kasabi, ay, bali kayo na lang, kayo na lang, medyo ano lang naman ako, extra lang naman ako. So kadalasan po, eh, nawawala po yung mga ganun. Na, natitira po mga dalawa, tat na lang po. Tapos pag ganun po, yun po, mas magandang pag-uusap po pag mas kokonte. Ayan. Sabi nga nila, di ba, too many cooks spoil the food. Yan. Yan. At same time po, inuwasan po natin pagchismisan yung mga ano natin, ano, yung mga kapwa hente, kapwa broker natin po. Yung mga nasa industriya po. Yan. Yan. The practitioner shall use or furnish transactional documents uh, only upon the written consent of the practitioners from whom such documents originated. Yan, yung mga hearing fee, chismis fee, paano na fee. Yan. So, usually, maganda lang po kasi talaga maganda pong hatihan kasi is 50-50 lang. Eh. Buyer side, seller side. Usually, pag sa mga ganong meetings po na sabi ko, yan, sabi ko na po sa kanya, oh, ganito po ah, uh, lahat ng buyer side sa kaliwa, lahat ng seller side sa kanan. Ayan po, usapan na po komisyon dito, 50-50 po. So, bahala na kayo sa side ninyo. Kung isang daan kayo dyan, problema nyo na po yung sa buyer side niya, isang daan. Yung seller side, pito kami o oh, problema na namin tong pito. So ganyan po. Ang tanong po in the end is kung isandaan kayo sa side ninyo at paghahatian ninyo na komisyon, eh, sabi na natin ko are eh, 100,000 pesos ang komisyon na paghahatian ninyo sa isang side sa seller side o sa buyer side. Pero isandaan kayo. Tandaan ninyo yung paghihirap ninyo, yung for 100,000 divided by 100 kayo maghahati-hati yan. So tigwa 1,000 kayo. Pero ilang beses kayo makipag-meeting, ilang beses kayo magbabayad ng pagkain, ilang beses yung kukulitin niya ang isang daan na yan, di ba? Sulit pa kaya yun. yun. Next, section 5. To the accredited and integrated professional organization or IPO. Yan, ito po yung organization nating mga uh, real estate service professionals na binubuo po. The practitioner shall support the IPO by actively participating in its programs and activities. Currently, right now po, 
uh, wala po tayong designated na IPO pero hopefully po uh, with the help of the uh, PRBRES sana po magkaroon na po tayo ng isang organisasyon na national at saka lahat po tayo members para po kahit papano ay uh, mas mapalakas ang ating industriya. The practitioners shall abide by the procedures on mediation, conciliation, and arbitration of grievances and disputes. A practitioner who is a party to such grievances or disputes shall, as far as possible, exhaust all possible administrative remedies within the context of the IPO by laws by, before elevating the same to the jurisdiction of the board and or commission and or to the court or tribunal. So ito pong IPO, hopefully po, ay gagana na para siyang, uh, isipin niyo po siya para siyang uh, uh, barangay hall. Yan po. So, kung may problema po ang dalawang ahente, ang ahente at ang broker, uh, ang broker at saka yung isa pang broker, yan po. So, hopefully, kapag hindi po sila uh, magkaintindihan or uh, mag-come into terms na silang dalawa, pwede pong ma-elevate sa barangay hall. Ika nga. So, ito po yung parang barangay hall po, yung ay po. So, sa ay po po, hopefully po, magkaroon na po ng solusyon. Pag hindi po po baka na solusyon i-elevate naman po sa ating uh, PRBRES or yung Professional Regulatory Board of Real Estate Service under the PRC or Professional Regulation Commission And then po after po doon pag wala pa rin po ayan na po demandahan na po yeah. so hopefully po uh, ma tuloy na yung pag uh, form nitong IPO Article 4 Specific Duties and Responsibilities the practitioner shall live up to the tenets enshrined in the oath of the professional which he or she has sworn to abide by in the practice of the profession. Ito pong oath of the professional, ito po yung gagawin ninyo pong oath-taking or virtual oath-taking po once masubmit nyo na lahat ng mga documents ninyo sa PRC, once mabigyan na po kayo ng schedule, magkakaroon po ng virtual oath-taking po. Actually po, yung oath-taking nihan, uh, required po yan sa lahat ng brokers, appraisers, assessors, consultants, at saka real estate salespersons po. Meron po tayong oath-taking na mangyayari. At saka kung uh, may natira pa po, uh, kung available pa po, may, may binibigay po silang pin na pwede yung palagay po sa kwelyo nyo po or sa blouse. Para po every time mag uh, sa site manning or boot manning po, may mga pin na nakalagay para po easily identifiable. Yeah. Section 2, the practitioner shall provide his or her services in a competent, dedicated, and ethical manner compatible with the independence and integrity of the profession. Yan po, para po uh, nalaman na kapag uh, professional yung isang real estate uh, uh, salesperson or broker, appraiser, consultant, or, or assessor, masabi na rin na, ah, okay, so meron silang sinusundan na code of ethics and responsibilities and highly professional itong mga nasa real estate na to Hindi ito yung pipitsugin lang na basta-basta. Ayan po. Section 3, the practitioner shall faithfully comply with this code of ethics and responsibilities as well as with the separate codes that will hereinafter be issued for each of the real estate service disciplines. Uh, this separate code shall be considered as integral parts of the code of ethics and responsibilities after the approval and promulgation. Yan po. Section 4, the practitioner shall honor and abide by its uh, commitments with other parties provided that uh, such agreement is in consonance with the laws of public order, public policy, morals, and good custom with this code. Yan. Finally, yan. And dito na po tayo. Towards the end na po tayo. Article 5, final provision. Subject to the requirements of due process, any violation of this code of ethics, and responsibility shall give rise to the imposition of sanctions such as reprimand, suspension, or revocation of license, and other penalties pursuant to Section 19, Article 3, and Section 39, Article 5 of RA 9646, whatever is appropriate. Yan. Ano po ba nakalagay sa Section 19? Ayan po, kasi... Uh, minention niya sa Section 19, Article 3. So, ano po yung Section 19, Article 3? Basa po. Basahin natin. Section 19 uh, ng Real Estate Service Act, revocation or suspension of the Certificate of Registration and the Professional Identification Card or cancellation of, of Special Temporary Permit. The Board may, after giving proper notice and hearing to the party concerned, revoke. Yan. So, 
tanggalin, kunin ang Certificate of Registration and Professional ID Card or cancel the special or temporary permit of a real estate service practitioner or suspend him from the practice of the profession on any of the following instances here under. So ano itong mga, mga instances na to Number one, or letter A, procurement of a certificate of registration and or professional ID card by fraud or deceit. So, it's a bin denaya ng loko para makakuha ng certificate pineke. Yan. Letter B, allowing an unqualified person to advertise or to practice the profession by using one certificate or registration or ID card or special temporary permit. So, nagkataon na may sakit ka, ah, hindi mo kayang mag, uh, ano, uh, pumunta sa boot manning. So, ang ginawa mo, nag-assign ka ng proxy. Pwede ba yung proxy? Di ba? So, ikaw ang may ID, ikaw ang... Uh, uh, credited salesperson, but since uh, hindi ka available or uh, lagari ka, may isang pang kliyente na entertain, inutusan mo ang iyong anak, ang iyong pinsan, ang iyong kapitbahay na ikaw na muna ang mag-boot manning. Ito yung PIN ko, ito yung ID ko, ito yung, uh, ano ko, yung mga certificate ko. So pag may magtanong, kunwari, ikaw ay ako. Yeah. So bawal po yun. Para pong ano yan eh, para pong driver's license po yan eh na na hindi uh, uh, pinag-drive mo yung ibang tao, pinagamit mo yung lisensya mo kasi wala silang lisensya. So, yan po. Bawal din po yun sa selling po. Unprofessional or unethical conduct. Yan. Baka mamaya pinag-chismisan mo eh. Ikaw yung chismosa or chismoso na uh, naninira ng uh, pagkatao ng kapwa, ahente, kliyente mo. Yan. So, malpractice or violation of any of the provisions of the Act, IRR, and the Code of Ethics. Yan. Engaging the practice of profession during the period of one suspension. So, suspended ka na, tapos nagpa-practice ka pa rin o nagbebenta ka pa rin o nagpag-negotiate ka pa rin. Yan. Bawal po yan. So, yan. So, unprofessional or unethical conduct. Yan po. Ito pa pala tips. Yan. So, uh, salespersons. Ano? So, again, nag-inject tayo ng mga certain tips. Ano? Tips nga pala sa salesperson. Ito po. Um, but po kasi maraming open house. Ano? Or maraming mga tripping, maraming viewing. Yan po. Ito pang advice ka sa inyo. Pag meron po kayong client na first time nyo lang po na meet or first time nyo lang po na interact. Yan po. Ah... Uh, Siyempre, invite natin sila sa open house. Ano? Make sure po na kung kaya naman po, eh, sunduin nyo na po sa bahay yung kliyente. Yan po. Uh, huwag po tayong makipag... Hindi mo sa huwag naman. Kaya lang, uh, ingat na lang po. Yan po yung term. Ingat lang po pag nag meet po sa, uh, sa site, uh, sa model house. Uh, sa gate, yan, sa gate, na, lalo na po sa gate, maraming po mga multo po doon sa gate. <laughs> yan, mga kapwa natin multo, na nasa gate po, yan, nasa gate, nasa tindahan, sa tapat ng gate, sa may, sa may fast food, sa tabi ng subdivision, yan po, sa may waiting shed, kahit po sa mall na malapit po sa project natin po, uh, as much as possible po, medyo... Uh, hindi man sa ano, huwag natin gagawin. Medyo uh, ingat lang po. Yan. Yan po. Kasi po marami po mga multo-multo sa tabi-tabi. <laughs> Yan po. Baka mamaya eh, nakipag-meet kayo ng kliyente sa, ano, sa open house. Sabihin niyo yung, yes ma'am, Mr. Uh, ano, Mr. Uh, C. Yan po. Mag-meet na lang po tayo sa open house po namin. Uh, nandun po ako ng uh, 4 o'clock po. Nandun po ba kayo ng 4 o'clock? O oh, sige, sige. Kita tayo bukas ng 4 o'clock po sa site ninyo. Sabihin ni Mr. C sa inyo. Ayan. Uh, sir, hanapin nyo lang po ako. Mr. Tupas po. Ako po yung pinakagawa po po doon na, na ahente po doon sa, sa open house po na yun. May kilala nyo po ako. 4 o'clock po tayo. O sige po, 4 o'clock. Ayan. Ito naman si Mr. C nung kinamagahan. Biglang nagkaroon ng appointment. Or biglang naisipan na Makadaan na nga daw sa site na yun. Total, malapit lang. Tsaka along the way naman, may pupuntahan akong meeting. Ano ba naman yung umuwi na lang? Dumaan naman ako doon. Diba? So, dumaan si Mr. C na mga alauna na hindi sinabi sa'yo. Bakit? Eh, napadaan lang nga. Eh. So, naisip na, na, na niya na sisilipin na lang niya yung project site. Yan, yung open house. Eh, pagdating na doon sa open house, 
naghinanap na tuloy yung pinakagwapong ahente yan si Mr. Tupas at may napagtanungan siyang nandiyan po ba yung pinakagwapong ahente na Mr. na si Mr. Tupas yan biglang may nagtanong na ano may multo na nandoon at nagsabing ano po ang pangalan ninyo yan sabi ako si Mr. C ah kaano ano po si Mr. Tupas Ah, siya po yung ano, siya yung na uh, meet ko online sa ano sa TikTok. Ayun, na meet ko si Mr. Tupa sa TikTok at inofera na ako ng property dito. Ah. Ah, nagkakilala po ba kayo ni Mr. Tupas? Ay hindi pa nga, pero sabi niya siya yung pinakagwapo raw po sa site na to. Bigla nalaman nung multo na ay si Mr. Tupas po ba? Yung nagsasabing napakagwapo po niya. Oh, siyang siya na yun. Sinabi ng multo eh, Nako po sir, bad news po. Bakit? Ano nangyari kay Mr. Tupas na pinakagwapo raw po na ahente? <laughs> Pinagpipilitan eh. <laughs> Nako po si Mr. Tupas, nag-resign na po. Ha? Nag-resign na? Ikausap ko lang kahap kagabi. Yun na nga po eh, lahat po kami dito gulat na gulat na nag-resign na po siya. Ha, bakit? Hindi po namin alam. Para po may kaunting problema po. May tililing. Nako. Mahirap pong kasama yun. Anyway po, since andito rin po kayo, sabi ng multo, uh, gusto niyo po, eh, pakita ko na rin po sa inyo yung site. Uh, o sige, pwede naman, siguro yun. Pero sir, papirma na lang po dito sa aming uh, ano, logbook form para po mailagay lang po yung pangalan niyo dito sa list of guest po namin. Yan. Pakilagay na lang po dito sa form ang inyong pangalan address, cellphone number, email. Yan lang po ilagay nyo po. At sa mga ibang blank na nakalagay po diyan sa baba, tulad ng referor at saka sales agent, ako na lang po ang bahala mag-fill up po. Hindi nyo po kailangan fill up niyan po. Name lang po, address, number, at saka date lang po. Ayun. So in short, nakuha na ng multo. At pagdating ng gwapong ahinting si Mr. Tupas ng alas 5, wala na. Yan. So, ingat-ingat lang po. At the same time po, make sure po na hawak nyo po yung inyong uh, uh, kliyente po. Yan. So, truth be told, maraming po mga multo rin po sa negosyo natin. Sa tingin ko naman po, lahat naman po may mga multo rin po eh, sa lahat ng mga negosyo. So, ingat-ingat lang po tayo. At the same time po, sana po, eh, to pa rin lang po natin itong code of ethics natin. Yan po. So, na-mention din po, section 39, Basahin po natin. Penal provisions. Any violation of this act, including violations of implementing rules and regulations, shall be meted, shall be meted with a penalty of. Yan. So, Section 39, RA 9646. Magkano ba ang penalty kapag uh, may violation ng act? Yan. Ito lang naman po. A fine of not less than 100,000 pesos. So, yan po yung na, na sasaad po sa batas. A fine of not less than 100,000 pesos. Kaukulang uh, uh, kabayaran na hindi bababa sa isang daang libong piso. So, hindi po pwedeng 99,000 pesos. Hindi po pwedeng 5,000 pesos. 3,000 pesos. 99,999 pesos. Kailangan po minimum hindi bababa ng 100,000 pesos. So, ibig sabihin po 100,000 pesos, 101,000 pesos pesos, 150,000 pesos, 200,000 pesos, 1 million, 10 million, 500 million, 1 trillion, 1 billion, 1 trillion dollars. Yan. Sir, sobra naman yun, 1 trillion dollars. <laughs> Joke naman, sir, kayo. Eh. Well, sabi kasi sa batas, eh, a fine of not less than 100,000 pesos lang daw. Eh. So, yung 1 trillion dollars, di naman siya less 100, ng 100,000 pesos. So, pwede. Yan. So, technically, kung mapasahin natin yung batas na kung ano yung nasasaad sa batas at yun lang ang pagbabatayan natin, eh, pwede nga siguro. Pero syempre, pag lumagpas ka naman at hindi naman makatao yung, yung pinataw sa inyo ng, for example, ng judge, eh, meron naman mga kaukulang mga batas na para ma pigilan naman po may mga court of appeals naman may mga supreme court may mga civil rights naman po tayo na pwede naman po nating maano yan uh, ayan po uh, i think uh, this afternoon or tomorrow friday 
uh, kasama po nating lecturer yung bakit batikang uh, uh, si attorney uh, James Balmas yan po kasama po niya si uh, Professor Rod Leonin po yan po marami po silang experiences sa mga ganito po yan so pwede niyo pong ma malaman further yan po yan so again po sa section 39 a fine of not less than 100,000 pesos ay yun may or pa pala hindi ko po nakita no or may or anong sabi sa or meron pa lay eh. so pwede pa lang or so anong sabi ng or pwede naman pa lang hindi magbay pwede ka naman pa lang hindi patawan ng fine na not less than 100,000 kasi may or or ano ba tong or or yan or imprisonment nako kulong of not less than 2 years ayan po nakalagay na naman po sa batas section 39 RA 9646 imprisonment of not less than 2 years so ang pagkakakulong nang hindi bababa ng 2 years. So hindi po pwedeng isang araw lang po na kulong. Hindi pwedeng isang linggo, isang buwan, anim na buwan, siyam na buwan, sampung buwan, isang taon, isang buwan, isang taon at kalahati. Minimum of 2 years ang nasasaad po sa batas. Hindi bababa ng 2 years. Madali lang. Hindi bababa ng 2 years. Imprisonment of not less than 2 years. So, nagsabihin yan. So, basta hindi bumaba ng 2 years. So, pwede 2 years, 2 years, 1 month, 3 years, 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 50 years, 70 years. Pwede pa lang lifetime? Pwede ba, sir, pwede ba lifetime? Basahin natin yung batas. Ano ba sabi? Imprisonment of not less than 2 years. Ang lifetime ba less than 2 years? Hindi eh. More than 2 years eh. So, pwede. Oo nga, ano? Yung sabi sa batas eh. Sabi sa batas, minimum. Wala sabi maximum eh. So, minimum of two years. So, pwede sir, dalawang lifetime? Oo, oh, pwede. Dalawang lifetime. Mayroon kayo narinig na kaso, ano, na pinatawan siya ng limang life sentences. Ano? So, reclusion perpetua. Pwede ba yun? Sir, pwede ba yun? Eh, mabuting itanong natin kay attorney James Balmas yan bukas kung pwede ba yun? Kasi sabi sa batas, not less than two years lang eh. Di ba? So again, meron namang sir, nakakatawa naman sir. Sobra naman 'yon. So again, ano, meron naman mga protection in place para hindi naman siguro ma lifetime imprisonment ka dahil sa batas. Ayun. So again, ano, ayan. So nakalagay lang po sa batas, imprisonment of not less than 2 years. Or ay, yung pala by or na mamampale. So pwede ka ma-penalize or imprisonment or ayan, ano pa ba tong third option natin? Third option or or both. Yeah. So, pwede palang kulong, tapos penalty. Yeah. Or both such fine and imprisonment upon the discretion of the court. So, depende kay judge. Kung hindi niya type ang pagmumukha mo or hindi niya type yung situation or baka mamaya eh, other circumstances, pwede niya sabihin both. Yeah. One billion dollars plus five life sentences. Yeah. Sabi kasi sa batas, both eh, upon the discretion of the court. Yeah. In case the violation is committed by an unlicensed real estate service practitioner, yan, the penalty shall be double. So, anong sabi ng double? Ibig sabihin, minimum of 200,000 fine or, or minimum 4 years imprisonment or both. Yan, yun po yung nasasabi sa batas ng RA 9646. In case a violation is committed by a partnership, corporation, association, or any other juridical person, the partner, president, director, or manager who has committed or present or consented or to or knowingly tolerated such violation shall be held directly liable and responsible for the acts as principal or as co-principal with the other participants, if any. So, damay-damay din pala, no? So, may kasama naman pala sa preso kung sakali. Article 6. Yan. So, Code of Ethics lang po tayo ngayon. Ano? So, meron pa mga ibang mga expansion nito. Ibang mga further details which will be uh, discussed further by my uh, uh, fellow other lecturers in the succeeding days. So, again po, uh, three days po tayo. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Ang schedules po natin is 9 to 11 at saka 1 to 3. Uh, today, tomorrow and then Saturday. Make sure po na naka-attend po kayo ng three days. Yan po. Yan. So, Article 6, Effectivity. 
ng uh, ating Code of Ethics. The, this Code of Ethics and Responsibility shall take effect after 15 days following its publication in the official gazette or any newspaper of any general circulation of the Philippines. So, kadalasan po lahat po ng mga batas, lahat ng mga resolutions po, uh, may mga hearing, may mga discussions po, and then after po mapatupad at mapapirmahan, nagkakaroon po siya ng publication na tinatawag sa gazette or a newspaper of general circulation. In the case of itong uh, uh, Code of Ethics po, yan po, uh, napirmahan po siya noong uh, May 6, 2019 in the city of Manila, signed by uh, PRBRES Chairperson uh, Honorable Ofelia C. Binag, uh, Board Member Honorable Pilar M. Torres Banag, Honorable uh, uh, Rafael M. Fajardo, and Honorable Jose Arnold M. Tan, si Honorable Board Member Bacon, hindi po pumirma, hindi ko lang po alam ba't hindi po pumirma, si Honorable Bacon, yan po. Baka po no comment si Bacon. Yan, joke lang po, kayo naman po. Yan po, baka masyadong ano yun, ano, yan. Basta po, yan, ito po yung nakalagay po sa, sa copy po ng official uh, real estate service uh, uh, code of ethics, yan po. Ayan po siya, uh, PRB uh, Resolution Number 39, attested by uh, the Chief of the Professional Regulatory Board Secretary Division, Attorney Lovelica T. Bautista, approved by uh, PRC Chairperson, uh, Chof Attorney Teofilo Espilando Jr., signed by Commissioner Yolanda Reyes, signed by Commissioner Jose Cueto, Yan po, date of publication, official gazette, July 29, 2009. Date of effectivity, August 14. I've had this problem. Big problem. I really, really need A good real estate broker. And I kept searching and searching. Ah, there are so many choices. It's really hard to find one that has all the things on my list. But I finally did it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. If you were looking for one as well, look no further. Here's a really good one. Just use mine. Use mine. I'm very satisfied. Definitely recommend that. Problem gone. Thank you.